Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about glycolysis. Before we get into the video, please make sure to subscribe to our channel as this helps us out a lot. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Okay, let's get to the video. Glycolysis is a 10-step process that breaks down glucose, a 6-carbon sugar, into two molecules of pyruvate, which contains three carbons each. It occurs in the cytoplasm of cells and is the first stage of cellular respiration. This produces energy for the cell. The process is divided into two phases. The energy investment phase, where two ATP molecules are used to modify glucose, and the energy payoff phase, where four ATP molecules and two NADH molecules are produced. This results in a net gain of two ATP molecules for the cell. Glycolysis is vital because it provides quick energy and can occur with or without oxygen, making it a universal and flexible energy pathway. If oxygen is present, pyruvate continues into the mitochondria for further energy production, while in the absence of oxygen, it is converted into either lactate in human cells and animal cells or ethanol by yeast and other bacteria. The ethanol production is called alcohol fermentation. Let's start with the energy investment phase. The energy investment phase is the first half of glycolysis, where the cell uses two ATP molecules to modify glucose. This phase prepares glucose for further breakdown, ensuring that it becomes more reactive and can eventually produce high-energy intermediates. The ultimate goal of these steps is to make glucose easier to split into smaller, manageable molecules. Let's look at each step. Step number one. In this step, the enzyme hexokinase, or glucokinase in liver and pancreatic cells, adds a phosphate group from ATP to glucose. This forms glucose 6-phosphate, also known as G6P. This step is irreversible and traps glucose inside the cell as G6P cannot cross the cell membrane. Hexokinase is inhibited by G6P, but glucokinase is not. Remember that glucokinase is found in liver and pancreatic cells. Therefore, in liver and pancreatic cells, glucokinase not being inhi inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate allows the liver to continue storing glucose after meals where glucose levels are high. This reaction commits glucose to the cell for energy production or storage. Step number two. In this step, phosphoglucose isomerase is the enzyme that is involved. Phosphoglucose isomerase rearranges glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate, also known as F6P. This is a reversible reaction. This reversible reaction converts glucose, which is an aldose, to fructose, which is a ketose. This change makes it easier for the molecule to undergo further modification in the following next steps. Step number three. Phosphofructokinase 1 is the enzyme that is predominant in this step. This is a crucial step where phosphofructokinase 1 uses another ATP molecule to add a phosphate group to fructose 6-phosphate. This creates fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which is also called F1,6-BP. This step is an irreversible step and is highly regulated. This means that it controls the speed of glycolysis. Phosphofructokinase 1 which is the enzyme in this step, is activated by signals that indicate low energy. An example of one such signal is AMP. Similarly, phosphofructokinase 1 is also an enzyme that is inhibited by signals of high energy, like ATP and citrate. This ensures that the cell only breaks down glucose when energy is needed. Step number four. Aldolase is the main enzyme in step number four. In this step, aldolase splits 
fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two 3-carbon molecules. One of the molecules is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, also known as G3B, and the other molecule is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, also known as DHAP. This is a reversible reaction, and this reversible step breaks down the 6-carbon sugar into two smaller molecules that will eventually generate energy. Step number five, triose phosphate isomerase is the enzyme in step number five. Triose isomerase phosphate converts dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which was also called DHAP, into another glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is also called G3P. Since only G3P can continue to glycolysis, this step ensures that both products of the aldolase reaction is used. This maximizes the energy yield from glucose. Now we go on to the energy payoff phase. In the energy payoff phase, the broken down glucose molecules from the investment phase are processed to generate ATP and NADH. These are the high energy molecules that a cell needs. This phase results in a net gain of energy producing more ATP than was used in the energy investment phase. So let's move on to step number six. In step number six, the main enzyme is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. In this step, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase catalyzes the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, also known as G3P, while reducing NAD plus to NADH and adding a free phosphate group forming 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This molecule is also called 1,3-BPG. This is the first redox reaction in glycolysis and marks the beginning of energy extraction from glucose. Step number seven. In step number seven, the main enzyme involved is phosphoglycerate kinase. Phosphoglycerate kinase transfers a phosphate group from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, also known as 1,3-BPG, to ADP, generating ATP and forming 3-phosphoglycerate. This step is an example of a substrate-level phosphorylation, where ATP is directly produced without using the electron transport chain. It's the first point in glycolysis where the cell gains ATP. If you want to learn more about the electron transport chain, check out our video on that in our channel. Step number eight. The main enzyme involved in step number eight is phosphoglycerate mutase. In this step, phosphoglycerate mutase moves the phosphate group from the third carbon of 3-phosphoglycerate to the second carbon, forming 2-phosphoglycerate. This rearrangement is necessary for the next step, and it sets up the molecule for ATP production. Step number 9. The main enzyme involved in step number 9 is called enolase. Here, enolase removes a water molecule from 2-phosphoglycerate. This creates phosphoenol pyruvate which is also called PEP. Phosphoenol pyruvate is a high-energy molecule due to its structure. This makes it ready to donate a phosphate group to ADP in the final step of glycolysis. Step number 10. This is the last step of glycolysis. In this last step, pyruvate kinase is the main enzyme involved. Pyruvate kinase transfers a high-energy phosphate from the phosphoenol pyruvate, also called PEP, to ADP. This forms ATP and pyruvate. This is an irreversible step of glycolysis. This irreversible step is regulated and ensures the production of ATP. Pyruvate will either then enter the mitochondria for further energy production, if oxygen is present, or will be converted to lactate in human and animal cells in anaerobic conditions. And that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye!